so I had a kafunko and my painting session went poofy poof poof. So I apologize for that. So I am using this Chinese white. And I know a lot of people don't use it, blah, blah, blah. I use it. Listen, you got to do what's best for your painting. So I'll say use everything available for you to make your painting work. I'm going to look for my picture. So with the Chinese white, you see these parts that I kind of just left unpainted. Just going to go over with it this is my preference you don't have to do this like i said i only leave whatever parts white on purpose now this chinese white will get very very opaque so what you're going to do is that you have to probably use some gouache. Just going to make that tongue pink. Okay. And I like to basically just underline my paintings sometimes. And again, just lifting up where I went through that, I went kind of too much with the pattern. And yes, I am blowing up or blowing a little bit. I don't use the blow dryer unless it's necessary because I'm going to do a lot of washes So I'm going to get my gouache.
I'm gonna get also my white pencil. We're gonna use the gouache for parts that we can highlight. Okay. Oh my god. I'm tired already. <laughs> I am tired. I'm getting older, so that's what happens. I'm using Windsor and Newton, okay? And I just use a little bit here and there, but it actually brings up the painting a lot. So you might want to get into that if you're doing watercolors, of course. <sighs> I'm sorry that I'm breathing heavily. But I'm getting, I had a fever yesterday because I think that <coughs> I'm getting sick. And so that's what's up. So we're going to highlight the eye. Okay. And the original doesn't have it. But I always like to add that, highlight here and there. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on this eye and I'm also going to add it here and add it here I'm gonna use a very bright highlight here on the tongue just to make sure that people can see it and also on the nose what happened you got the monsters Over here, I'm going to be using hard on and around the eye. Over here, we're going to do the same thing. Always, um, I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, thank you. Always make sure that if you're going to add like the gouache to your painting, make sure that you don't 
post it back into the watercolor like just use your wash clean everything up and then re then you can use your watercolors otherwise you'll have a wash painting and since we're just adding highlights we just want to do that um these brushes i mean they're great but they will create a bubble and it can ruin your painting so always wash for keep an eye keep an eye on on it because otherwise it will ruin your painting So right where we apply the Chinese, white Chinese uh, paint, I'm also going to apply the wash, not everywhere, but in some parts. Remember that highlights is basically what makes your drawing or your painting kind of just come alive. And it's basically the last, last thing that you will do on your artwork. Um, you can definitely, you don't have to use the wash. You can just finish it up with your watercolor and it will be fine. I just find it that wash is the perfect match for an artwork, specifically for animals. I mean, you know, some people call it cheating. I say do what you have to do for your artwork to become something that you like you know i don't paint this is not a sales per uh what's it called i'm not selling the painting this is for my own love of art and i feel like if i were to post this in my in my wall i want to see something that i like and so i will try my best to give it my all so, and the more I feel like the more effort, even if it's just an artwork that is going to be saved for future reference, it, it is just good to look at, but also you have an idea if you want to do a painting later on in another medium, you have an idea on how to actually uh, create it. Now, so this part over here, I noticed that we have to keep basically the pattern because it does looks from afar, it looks kind of like too much, a little bit tacky. So I have to put in that other um, color, which is like, this is like a burnt sepia, I guess. And we're going to also do the same thing here. So basically everything, even though it's hair, it will have the same pattern. It is important because it does look tacky if you see too much, um, when you see too much highlights, too much of a hair, people say she went crazy on that area. And you just want to, like when you look at a painting, you want to feel relaxed. You don't want to feel pushed. You don't want to feel, oh yeah, she's, she tried to be better than this is just for your own, uh, I guess for in my case is for my own satisfaction, but at the same time, you don't want to be too tacky because the details can actually throw people off. I mean, that's not my opinion, of course. Um, you do what you got to do with your own work. So I often, when I see pockets of paint, like this one, what I do is that I kind of just rub it around or kind of just share it with the rest of the work. And that will act, that actually helps me with my, with the rest of 
my work. I don't have to worry about the pockets of paint. Like a lot of people um, also in watercolors, you know, you, there's like some dripping here and there and I really enjoy those. However, they can also run if you stand in your painting, if you're gonna maneuver your painting. So I always kind of just take, pick it up with my brush and post it somewhere else that it might be needed. Just gonna do a bit of blue. And this is just a watercolorist thing on the eye. And I think, I think we're done. I'm going to do it for the sake of the painting. It really, not necessarily you should be doing this. Um, I'm going to lift up because I want people to understand what lifting is. And since even though I'm painting, I'm showing you work, etc. I also like to share my knowledge. I, I also like to share what I know. So what I'm going to do here is called lifting. And what lifting does it just creates more depth, specifically with watercolors. And uh, lifting is as, as follows. I'm just wetting my brush here. This is a round. Uh, this is from Onison as well. This is the this is Onison brush number 11. This is kind of like a flat. Okay. I really don't know if they were made for watercolors. I'm using it with watercolors. They also work great with acrylics. I doubt that they're actually uh, um, natural. They're basically synthetic. So we're going to lift. I don't know if it's going to show, but I want you guys to see what lifting is. So on this area, let me see if my camera is actually, yeah. So on this area, I'm going to be lifting here. All right, so very carefully, whatever I lift from the brush, kind of just swipe it off on my napkin. And I do the same thing until I have kind of like that area there. And you can see it looks like a fold now. I use a lot of lifting when I'm doing uh, watercolor flowers and also to pick up and to kind of just shave off a little bit of sometimes the runs of watercolor all right so we're gonna lift here right and I think we can lift a little bit on both of the eyes over here on this area So notice how even though I'm lifting, I'm being very careful. All right, this is not to lift up the entire the entire. I used to, I used to lift up everything. So you have to be very careful when you're doing this, you know. And then again on this side. Kind of just like basically your own eraser. I'm going to do the same thing on over here. That's going to help me. There's a pocket of water. Pick it up with your brush. Okay. So I really love the poppy because it allows me to use not only one technique, but it also allows me to practice my work in different things. And specifically, I wanted to do a dog for so long because I, I've done a lot of cats, a lot of everything, but I've never actually created a, a dog. And I was wondering as to why. I didn't so today's time is for the doggy now a lot of people like to lift up the pencil 
you can do that this paper is not like the greatest for you to be lifting a lot so you have to be very very careful as to how much you're actually lifting um, the pencil does not bother me some people like to erase it after the pencil after the painting is dry this paper is very delicate this is uh, just a 98 pound paper as you can see so you want to be as gentle as possible with it and I think we are done I'm very happy content is the word with my dog I'm gonna scrape off over here just to make it look real and also a little bit over here All right, so everything you do, I like too harsh, so I also apply some lifting there. So everything you do for your painting, you know, all the efforts that you make for your painting, that will actually allow you to create a better painting. So sometimes, even though I like to, I'm a quick painter, I, I paint pretty, pretty fast. It's always good to take your time and to analyze the subject and then I feel like you know take your time because sometimes not every subject is easy sometimes it does takes time and it does gets complicated as as you go as the progress it gets complicated so you always take your time like I said you really don't have to do the hair I feel like I've seen dogs created in a very very watercolory way and i really like those styles i really like people when they do that but i really wanted to do create a dog because i think i have a cat somewhere in here so i wanted to do a dog so it's a dog's time and what better than a beautiful cute old folded and i don't know pug I think they have that personality of being cute, even though their face is kind of ugly to me. But I think that they have their ugly cute, I guess. So I want to thank you um, for watching this. If you like, you can definitely fast. Uh, I will say I was going to say fast forward, like, you know, those times, those days are past. My blockbusters days are gone. But, you know, I still have in my mind that you can fast forward. You remember when we used to say, can you rewind it? So <laughs> you can definitely um, forward back um, the process and watch it, pause it, analyze it, study it. This is basically free demos. And I do it with all my heart as much as I love uh, to create it. And um, that's it. I was going to do a gouache, but I don't think I have like the stamina anymore. I'm so tired. And I've been, I also work today. My fever is going, is coming back. So I might have to lay down, maybe just drink some tea and call it a night. If I have the stamina, because you know how we are. We want to just eat, breathe, and... I guess if we could eat it, eat art, but um, I think that it's gone. If you're interested to know about the materials that I'm using, this is Canson 98 pound paper. This is a mixed media paper. And I, in my opinion, think that this is extremely, extremely, and it works well with different watercolors um, techniques. Um, even though I have here different watercolor paper underneath, I've done different things. I've scraped it. I have really abused it. And thus far, I'm in love, in love with this paper. This paper, I use it for practice purposes. I really don't use it for my, I feel like my serious paintings, um, because of the, because of the pounds. I feel like, um, Perhaps in a Fabriano 140, which is a little bit more sturdier, um, will give it 
will give the art a little bit more of a high up. Um, I think that for practice, I think that this paper is excellent. The lifting is not that great, as you can see, because it's 98 pounds. Um, it's definitely a mixed media paper, so you can actually work with acrylics. Again, uh, taking consideration the pounds of the paper. It does buckles, but it doesn't bother me. Um, so if you don't, if you're not looking for something that buckles, this paper is definitely not for you. You might need something like a 300 grams, uh, 300 pound paper, 140. I don't like arts for some reason. I have bought it several times. I have tried to use it. I just can't. I, I don't like arcs. I don't know what's going on. You can you can find arcs everywhere, but I really don't like arcs. My favorite paper, and you might want to try it, is Fabriano Artistico. That's my baby. That's where I resource for. I love that paper. It's very versatile, and I definitely recommend you to try it. There's a, a variation of different papers out there, but for me, Fabriano Artistico is my baby. Um, and I use it in all kinds. I use it in hot press and I have used it in cold press and I have grown in love with it. That's my go-to paper. Um, and now of course for practice purposes and for like sketching and, and ideas and stuff like that, I resource to my Canson paper and it has to be mixed media because I'm really layering this baby. What else I was going to say? I do use gouache. And gouache is something that is a whole different game. It also, also um, wakes up with water, but um, it's also like the more expensive the gouache gets, or the the wash is, the better the gouache is. Um, you know, art materials are expensive, so you might want to check that. I always tell if I were to be teaching a class, if I were to be talking to people, I always tell my people to, in the beginning, to get something cheap, to practice, to do your mud puddles, to do whatever, and then later on gra graduate to a more um, fine or, or more art grade paper. The same thing with the watercolors. I'm using Koi watercolors this is like a travel set these are the colors these are pan travel set I have I have been using also Artesa um, these are I guess Chinese I don't know Asian I don't know it doesn't matter they're very bright I like them I've been using Artesa I actually did my kitty with Artesa and it came out beautiful um, and my I guess that graduation will be I, I always resource to my beautiful watercolors which are a little bit pricey but they're worth the buck I've been using it for a very very long time which is Schminke and Schminke I don't know if I'm saying it correctly S-H-M-I-N-K-K-E Schminke it's a very potent, very bright watercolor, and I love schminke. I love that type of watercolor. When I was, I was going to say when I was growing up, which is true, because I have grown with art. When I was growing uh, into a little bit more serious, I tried Winsor & Newton, and I also tried different. I have also tried Bebeo, uh, Mary's watercolors, which are cheap also. Jarka watercolors. I have used um, a bunch of watercolors, and for me, like my preference has always been Schminke, and I've also used Holbein. So take all that into consideration when you're buying your materials. I think that I have exhausted resources when it comes to different things and different themes that I have done in watercolors, and I think that. For me, the best out there is the Schminke. But, you know, it's a watercolor that is very potent. Um, and, like I said, uh, it could be on ease if you don't know how to maneuver it. 
in the beginning but once you get a hang of it you can you you can tell on how much um, pigment it actually has and that's the best thing you don't have to struggle much with giving giving it too many um, too many layers to the to the paper and I think that's one thing that I'm looking for I do work in layers I prefer to work in layers I think that if I were to start a painting in watercolors and not finish it up with layers or do it do it just instantly of course the theme calls for whatever it calls but things like this I'd rather work in layers because it just is more much beautiful and you can control you can control the amount of watercolor that goes into your paper um, and that's it I hope that I made myself and I explain everything and the most I feel like the best part of all for everything that you do I think is the want and the passion for it that has to be that has to be I guess the goal here to have passion for something I think that's the main thing here so anyways we're gonna leave with the puppy if you're interested in more of this broadcast I guess more of these free demos uh, every time I get a chance every time I'm free every time I'm uh, not working I try my best to sit down and explain to y'all how I do my things and how I do my techniques and what I use and all that stuff been using watercolors for a very very long time it is not the only medium that I use I also use acrylics and oils but for me, I have a thing for watercolors. A lot of people have a misconception about it. A lot of people think that watercolors is for children, and it's okay. Um, but I think that over the past couple years, I think over the past 10 years, uh, I've seen a lot of artists putting that medium in a very high, high esteem. And I've seen people doing beautiful, incredible things with watercolors. So don't underestimate the medium. The medium is actually very good. And what else I was going to say? One thing I, without, you know, going off topic, I feel like the way I've learned to create almost everything and anything is by watching the old masters, people that used to paint back in the day, how they did their things have always been very interested in how to make different things and I do that also with my crafts um, with different things that I do with my hands with by hand so I will love to give you a link of everything and all the masters that I actually follow um, and I have a variety but I like to really see the under layers of paint that this person used for um, watercolors and also for oils. So I will suggest you to go into your library and go and study them and see how they did and how they created these beautiful masterpieces. I think that's the best way to actually learn to paint. And of course, watching others doing it. So I hope that I bring you some inspiration, something to do later on. You can definitely use these. These are free, free demos free for your own whatever these pictures are taken from actually pixabay which is actually a free website where you can actually download a picture and paint it yourself and recreate it in the medium of your liking i got to go and again you can follow me on twitter you can follow me everywhere i'm everywhere you can find me anywhere and i have the links on my bio Thank you again for watching, for all the support, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good night if I don't see you again. But until next time, I'll see you later. See you. See you when I see you. How is that? Bye. Say woof woof. He is cute. Bye.